Hello, and welcome to the eWay CRM Academy series. My name is Ernest, and today we're going to have a look at how you can manage your companies and contacts inside of eWay CRM Online. Let's dive in. So for today's walkthrough, I'm going to be working in Outlook Online, but this is going to be almost identical if you're working for Outlook for Mac or the new Outlook for Windows. Looking at what eWay CRM Online is, the first thing to note is going to be my preview panel. This is going to give you all of the CRM information for your contact right here in this side panel. I can quickly see the categories that belong to my contact. I can open them up. I can see upcoming tasks. I can see previous communications. I can even click to call him. Very useful information. Another brand new feature with AI is the ability to suggest tasks based on what's contained in the email. The next part of eWay CRM Online is going to be the dropdown. This is going to provide us with all of our modules, allowing us to work with our CRM directly inside of Outlook. For instance, when I launch my contacts right here, it's going to pop up and embed right inside of the Outlook window. There's no switching apps. There's no bouncing between tabs. It all lives here in your inbox. Very useful, very helpful. You can also Look at these here inside of the browser if you'd like it on a larger screen. While we're here, let me show you one of the coolest new features that was just released in eWay CRM 9. It is the opportunity to import contacts from emails. This cool feature is going to scan your inbox, find the people you communicate with regularly that are not yet in your CRM and suggest that you add them as contacts inside of eWay. Here, let's add EJ Corey as a contact, and with one click, we have converted him straight to a contact. Pretty awesome. We will also give you the opportunity to import the email history that I have so we can backfill all of the communication with the contact. We'll skip that for now, and let's go back to my inbox. Let's look a bit at the day-to-day -day usage of eWay. In this Example here, I've got an email from a guy named Peter Alonzo. Looks like he is my new contact at ABC and is available. He's asking to have a call today. Uh, you know, I see he is not yet in my database, but because it is my database, I recognize ABC Enterprises as an existing company. So I do know who Peter Alonzo probably is. Let's though get him into the CRM. How do we do it? It's really simple. We've got these big buttons right here. Maybe I wanted to drop this into my sales pipeline. Maybe it's a prospect. I could convert it to deals. But today we're talking about contacts and companies. So let's convert Peter to a contact. Very easy. One click, we've done it. We could also do more with this email. Maybe we want to punt it, deal with it later in the week. We could have converted this to a task. Additionally, maybe it's uh, existing uh, existing a contact who we need to convert to a project. But again, that's not what we're dealing with today. Here we can see that Peter is a contact. So let's open up his contact and have a look at it. We're working today in eWay CRM 9.0, which is the newest version of eWay. This is the first version that brings AI into the CRM. What is it doing for us here? The one thing to note is that it's scanning that email and pulling over any contact information and filling in the fields. So you can see it brought over his company, it brought over his job title, and it brought over his phone number. Had there been an address, it would have brought that too. Really useful, less work that you have to do manually, and probably the most requested feature that I've had since we started four years ago, since I started four years ago. As I mentioned, ABC Enterprises is an existing company. Let's go ahead and associate it with the existing company in my database, ABC Enterprises, Inc. Now that that's there, we have Pete filled in and his address has matched. So first thing to note here is my form. This is customizable. So if you need to add custom fields, that's no problem. Next thing to note here are going to be my tabs. My tabs are what keep me organized, allowing me to quickly navigate to find what I need. The one thing that we have right now is an email, and that's because we just created this contact. As we worked through my communications with Peter Alonzo, we're going to fill up a lot more of these tabs. 
While we're here in the email screen, let's look at two new AI features that have also come over in regards to emails. One of them is the tone of the email. I can see that this tone was positive. You know, we will determine whether that tone was positive, neutral, or negative. I think positive and negative are going to be the most important. With negative, that's probably where you want to start, working through those negative emails first. Another amazing feature is the summary. This is going to summarize that email. I'm probably not the only person that gets a novel in my inbox most of the time. If I'm quickly trying to scan through it before picking up the phone call, picking up the phone to make a call, I love this summary opportunity to get it narrowed down to two sentences or so. Um, the one tab that I really want to highlight is the hub. The hub here is going to be my overview of the contact. I can come to the hub and I'll see not only mine, but my entire team's communication history, the journals, the emails, the tasks, the documents, all listed in chronological order. So I can come in and get a really quick snapshot of what's going on within this contact. As we see here in the body of the email, Peter is asking for a phone call today. Let's give Mr. Alonzo a ring. Let's go to add new journal. My journal tools, what I use for meeting notes, for call notes, anywhere where I want this timestamp, letting me know when this happened. Type here's a call. The timestamp is there. The subject will be call with Peter. And as you can see in my notes, Peter and I covered quite a bit of interesting information. Let's just say, you know, likely has a reorder request for next week. Check in on Tuesday. And I'll save that. I, I don't want to forget to check in with Peter. I love reorders. So to make sure that doesn't fall through the cracks right here on top of the journal, let's add a task. And something simple, um, reorder call. I promised him that call Tuesday. So let's set the due date for Tuesday. And here is also where I can delegate it. The solver field are going to be all of my employees here within, you know, here that use eway crm that will uh, be available for delegation let's give this one to dan coates and we'll save it right now dan's getting an email letting him know he's been uh, assigned this task to handle the reorder call with peter alonzo dan wasn't on the original call but it's no big deal because when he opens up this task you'll see there's a company he could open for context or a contact but even more useful is that journal. Opens up the journal and all of the notes he needs live right here. So eway Serum, it's just a giant spider web. Everything links together, connecting you, making sure that you can find what you're looking for. We'll close that journal, reopen the task here, and talking briefly about tasks in eway CRM, here, when Dan completes this task, I'm going to get notified. It's going to let me know that this has been done. That's something that Outlook doesn't do out of the box. Additionally, this is also going to live in my uh, task list so I can keep track of all of my delegated tasks. Finally, because I created it, I have the ability to come in here, change the due date, reassign it, or even mark it complete for them. So these are tasks with accountability, something that Outlook doesn't provide. Closing this all up, let's go back to my contact here with Mr. Alonzo. And as you see here in the hub, this chronological history is filling, it, filling in. Next week, we have that task. Today, we had the phone call and the email. And as I see here in my tabs, they're all here as well. Going back to my contact, let's talk a bit more about contacts and companies. We've given Bob the company ABC Enterprises. So now, if I want to see my team's communication with Peter Alonzo, I could open up the Peter contact and see it. But maybe I want to see our team's communication history with everybody at ABC Enterprises. Get a fuller picture of what's going on here. Not a problem, because companies now become a giant net capturing the communication for all of the contacts within. So now Peter's communications are going to get saved at the company level as well, along with Bob, Logan, and Emma's. So for instance, that journal... I can see all my calls with Peter live right here. 
and they are all getting saved here at the company level. Let's go back to my contact here and let's talk about categories. Categories are simple in eWay. You create a category in about 10 seconds, and when I do, it becomes available universally for all other contacts and all other colleagues. Here, let's you know acknowledge that Peter is a client and let's put him on my marketing list. You can see the categories have been assigned here at the top, and in a minute, we can use those to start sorting contacts, whether it is for marketing lists or referrals or whatever else you want to start grouping your contacts together by. Let's close out of this contact, and let's start, you know, before we do this, before we look at reporting and grouping, let's thank Peter for his time. Replying to this email, Peter, thanks for the time. I'll hit send. And what I want to talk about now is email saving inside of eWay CRM. We live in Outlook. Saving those communications needs to be easy, and we make it simple. There's two methods of doing this. The first method is automatic email saving. When you have this turned on, this is all happening at the server level. All incoming and outgoing emails to your contacts are automatically going to get saved to the contact. So you have that full communication history happening in the background, which is fantastic when you need to follow up with somebody. If that's too much, if you'd rather be a bit more selective in your email saving, no problem. Here in the preview panel, we have the save email button. When I click that, we're going to give you an opportunity to pick where you want this email saved. In this instance, we're going to guess, and we're usually pretty smart. We know that it's going to go to the company ABC, and we know that it's going to go to the contact Peter Alonzo. Maybe he and I are also working on a project together. I could also assign this to a project if needed, but that's not what we're doing here today. Let's just save it, and now that goes to Peter as well as the company. Opening up his contact to prove that they're there. <laughs> Let's do that briefly. And uh, you will see under the emails tab that Peter's email is there, additionally with a positive tone. So closing that, let's open up my contacts and look at how we can start grouping, organizing our contacts in eWay CRM, building reports, I guess. So by default, your contacts are going to live A to Z because that's probably the easiest way to start navigating your contacts inside of the CRM. But the more data you put in here, the more fields you build, the more dynamic these reports can become, the more we can start filtering and building some interesting reports. You know, in this instance, maybe we want to filter out just the CEOs for some reason. No problem. Hovering over any of these columns allows me to find this filter icon. In this case, we'll grab CEOs, click OK. And there is Peter as a CEO. Um, you know, I'm not sure why you'd ever need to do this. It might be more useful in like cities, perhaps. Let's uncheck that to remove that filter, uh, you know, and let's maybe scroll through. Let's look at some of the system fields in eWay CRM that we provide you. One of them is next step. This is indicating if we have a task assigned to that contact, you know, and I can see that I do have a lot of tasks. Some don't have tasks and maybe we'll fall through the cracks as a result. So next steps, quite useful. Last activity is a great system field as well. This is automatically populated by the last email or the last journal you have. So this is the last time you've touched them. Let's right click on this group by this column. And here I can see the last time I've talked to my contacts. Let's clean this up a bit. Let's group it by month so it's a little bit cleaner. And the first thing that jumps out is that I haven't talked to Michael here in over five months. I, you know, don't know your industry, but we're with, you know, in my job, I need to talk to my contacts more than once every five months. So this is probably my first phone call when I start my day to day. Um, additionally, we could maybe group by categories. And we gave Bob that category of, um, or sorry, we gave Peter that category of client and there he is. You guys live in Outlook. We live in Outlook. 
at least for Windows users, so much of your Outlook navigation is done via the right click. And we want this to feel native. We want this to feel like a natural extension of Outlook. So if you're working on a PC, I encourage you to right click as much as possible uh, because you're always going to find a shortcut that saves you a couple minutes, makes your life a little bit easier. In this instance, I can right click on a contact. And as you can see, I can assign another category without having to open up the contact. Let's maybe give uh, Peter the trade show category. And as you can see, we have assigned that to him as well. We could also start combining reports. You know, let's now that we're grouped by categories, let's also though group by last activity. So let's group by this column as well. And again, group that by month. And let's look here for the month of October. Now I can see the categories that the people I've touched in October live in. In the marketing list for the month of October, I have talked to all of these people. Again, is this a useful report? I don't know. Maybe it is. If it is useful, you have the ability to come over here and save that. And when you do save it, you're given the choice of keeping it for yourself or sharing it with the rest of the team. We give you a handful of pre-built filters, or we call them user views, but you always have the ability to build your own. So we could go by, you know, contacts by last activity, which we've looked at already. Or, you know, maybe we want to look at contacts by owners. Maybe we want to see who owns which contacts here within our system. And I can see that this is a good segue into what we call board view. And this is much more useful for sales and project pipelines. We, you know, these Kanban board views allow us to visualize all of this again, probably more useful for sales pipelines, but it can also work here perhaps by contacts by owner. And the cool thing here is that I can start reassigning them. Let's give Luke to Dan and let's give Mr. Valentin to Julia. With a drag and drop, I can reassign those. This also acts as a dashboard. So maybe using Ella Alberis here as an example, I can click the email icon and see the emails I've sent her. I can click the journal icon and see all of our journals or even the tasks icon, view the tasks, mark tasks complete, all right here without having to open up the contact. So this is just yet another way of visualizing your data that we can offer you here inside of eWay CRM Online. Finally, let's talk tasks. Tasks in eWay are great. I like to visualize my tasks oldest to newest uh, with my overdue tasks in red to give me that anxiety to speed through them. Um, we can see here this reorder call Let's right click on this one and mark it complete. And here you can also see, as I said, the solver field. So I can see those tasks I've delegated to others. That one task that's majorly overdue belongs to my colleague, Julia. That's gonna be a difficult phone call later. So that's been a good overview of how you can manage your contacts and companies inside of eWay CRM online. I have hope that you found this walkthrough helpful. If so, and you're viewing us on YouTube, feel free to give us a thumbs up or subscribe for more informative eWay CRM tutorials. If you're watching on our website, I'd encourage you to bookmark the resources page where you'll find all of our videos. Finally, if you have any questions, feel free to email my team, sales at eWay-CRM.com. And I thank you for watching, and I look forward to seeing you again soon. Cheers.